In this part, we will do the login feature. This will be almost similar with the registration step, which was the previous step of this series. If you prefer a text-based tutorial of this video, you can visit this link. In your components folder, create a new file named login-component.view. Then import this component in main.js, same like we did for register component. And also add this in routes array. Change the component to login component and path to login. Then in login component, create a template tag. And create a form. Set the submit event to prevent the default behavior of form submitting and call our method do login. Then create an input field for email. And an input field for password. And a submit button. This button will have value loading when the is loading variable is true. And this button gets disabled when the is loading variable is true. In your script tag, import the exist module for, send, for sending AJAX request and suite alert 2 for displaying pop up alerts. Export this module. The variable we will be using in this component is only is loading and it will have false as default value. So by default the login component will have value login and it will not have disabled attribute. And in methods we will create a method do login. It will be asynchronous. Get current component object in a variable named self because this keyword will not work in callback and we will be using callback in this function. Get the form tag and create form that object with it. Set the is loading to true. Call an Ajax with post method. Endpoint will be login. And send the form data object. When the response is received from server and the status is success, then AP will also be sending access token. We will save access token in a variable and we will save it in local storage. The value of local storage will be global variable. We will set this global variable's value in a moment. And value will be the access token received from server. Then we need to redirect the user to home page. In order to do that, we have to give a slight delay before redirection. We can give delay by calling set timeout method. The callback will be the function that will be called after delay. And second parameter will be delay in milliseconds. Setting it to 500 will cause 0.5 second delay since 1 second has 1000 milliseconds in it. Then we will reset the form as we did in registration. And if the status is not success from server, then we will set the is loading to false. And we will display the error in a sweet alert pop up. Create this global variable in main.js. To generate access token, we will be using JSON Web Token module. This module allows us to generate and verify secure access tokens for user, which we can use for authentication. So install that module by running the command npm install JSON Web Token in the command prompt opened in API folder. After install, run the server again. After that, we need to include this module in our server.js. and create a hard-coded secret key. This secret key will be used to generate unique access tokens. This key will also be used to verify the tokens. If the key mismatches, then the access token will not be verified. You can use any string value. Then create an API for login inside the MongoDB connection callback.
get the email and password from login form. First check if email exists. Then check if the password is correct. In MongoDB, we are saving hash string password, but from login input field, user writes his password in plain text. We can still compare the plain text with the hash string using bcrypt module. Call the compare method from bcrypt module. First parameter will be the plain text string, and second will be hash string, which we can get from database. And third will be callback function. It will have error argument if there is any, and a boolean variable is verified. This will tell if the plain text password matches with the hash string saved in database. If it matches, then we can generate the JSON web token short for JWT of user. We can use the user object ID from MongoDB to generate the token and secret key. The generated token has been stored in a variable named access token. We can set this access token in user's document. To update the access token value, we will be using MongoDB set operator. Although we already have an access token field, but MongoDB will automatically create this field if it does not exist and set the value to access token generated from JWT and send the response back to client. And also send the access token as well so the client app can save this access token in their local storage. Otherwise, we will show an error that the password is not verified. Test the app, go to login page, fill the form and hit submit. I have deliberately entered the wrong password and it gave me an error. Now I am going to enter the correct password. It has redirected me to home page which means the response status must be success. And if you check for MongoDB you will see that only that user's document has been updated. Its access token has been updated. And if you check your client app in your browser console tab. Just type local storage and hit enter. You will see that it has saved the access token key in local storage and it will be exactly same as in our MongoDB. So if you want to log out any user manually, you can simply go to his document from MongoDB and set the access token field to empty. So our authentication part is done. In the next tutorial, we will get the user's information from MongoDB using this access token saved in local storage.